Today marks the accomplishment of a lot of firsts for me. My first time being in a relationship, my first time being married, my first time being in love. Well, hopefully. The experts hit it. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think I can do this. I don't want to marry a stranger. Oh. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Married to Reality. It is the Married at First Sight edition. I'm your co-host, John, here with my wife and co-host. This is the one only Teresa right there. Hello, everyone. How's everyone doing? <sighs> the experts <laughs> did not hit it. I'll just tell you that. Oh, oh my God. I, some people want that to hit other people, but the experts <laughs> didn't hit anything. Yes, and Emily was saying in the intro, first time being in a relationship, first time being in love, first time being divorced. Uh, right? Well, we, uh, I just think we need, roll out the lie detector test. Let's Maury Povich this shit because I don't know what to believe. Why is Maury Povich fa famous? Why is any daytime Talk show host famous. Oh, that's who he is. Yeah. I didn't know that. There was the reference to Maury Povich in How I Met Your Mother. Apparently, <laughs> he's all over New York. Yeah. Everyone always sees him. Yeah. I didn't know who he was. He's like a more tasteful, uh, if you will, Jerry Springer. <sighs> okay. Ricky Lake. <laughs> Jimmy Fallon? <laughs> no. Earlier in the day. Uh, Sally Jesse Raphael. Let's just move on. Um, okay. Like the guy with a long microphone? That's Bob Barker. Yes. And no, he is better than all of those people combined. Bob Barker was great. I know. So I'm he saying. just passed away. R.I.P. Rest in prices. <laughs> Jesus. Um, <laughs> it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, what an absolute shit show. Let's just put it out there. It is what it is. This was an absolute shit show. I loved it so much. I want more. I, well, we're going to get more, Teresa. We're going to get, we're going to get one more next week. I'll, I'll give you my hot take. Are you ready? Sure. This screamed TLC. Mm. I almost feel like, did a producer from TLC who worked on all these tellos for 90 came over to Lifetime because now it's more dramatic. <laughs> Kevin's being sassy. We see the behind the scenes in the dressing rooms. Like this is the, this is first. Yeah. The behind the scenes was unnecessary. There wasn't anything really of substance going on there. Kevin absolutely delivered. I would say Sean could learn a thing or two from Kevin because he was asking the questions we all wanted answers to. Whether or not we got the answers, that's not up to him. But he was pushing. He was asking the uncomfortable questions. I was here for that. And he called them all out. I loved it. Totally. Well, because everyone was shitting on the process. Everyone was defiling the math's name. They weren't shitting on it. They literally came out and said, well, this was all orchestrated. We played a role, which is Ugh. the opposite of maths. What about the good old day when they freaking <laughs> found go. their own apartment? <laughs> there is a loss when they used to talk about their salaries. <laughs> yeah. There is a lot when they would go house hunting. I do because I am strangely interested in other people's jobs and and. Coming from a good place, I'm interested in what you're doing. I'm interested in how much you're making because it's it's cu I'm curious. There's some odd jobs that make a shit ton of money, yeah. and I'm like, wow. And there's some jobs that I feel like should be making a shit ton of money, and they make no money. I, and there's some jobs I've never heard of. I love hearing all about it. I forgot it was this very podcast where I had to inform you what an odd job truly was, what it meant. When someone did odd jobs. <laughs> what do you mean? You thought, well, let me ask you. Let me see if you've learned. What is an odd job? That's like a strange <laughs> job. <laughs> no, it's not. Yeah, it's like a, oh, you, you clean guitars for celebrities. That's an odd job. That's a cool job. No, but you thought it was like, oh, you train parrots how to do how to do voices. That's what I just said. 
Sure. That's an odd job. Right. That's not what it is. An odd job is like, oh, odds and ends. Like, oh, I, on Saturdays, like on Saturdays, I go and I fix the neighborhood basketball court. It's an extra job. It's an odd job. Just, Mm. you know. We have a different opinion on that. No, there's only one opinion of what an odd job is, and, and that's what it is. In America, I think... I think, yeah. and all the job, it's a cool, interesting job. It could be. They're, they're not a, mutually exclusive, but it's just, it's an isolated job you do over here. Did you just look up the definition? I was trying to. I couldn't type <laughs> with one hand. Anyways, it's it was quite the episode. And I'll say this to tee it up without going too deep into it. I'm going to have to take the phone off the hook this this podcast. I Why? Think. I was pretty anti all the guys this season. I gave them a hard time. You know, I wasn't easy on them, especially Cameron, mm. Brennan. I gave them a hard time. Oh, Ryan. Oh. I may be changing my tune a little bit. I may not be so anti guy after this first part of this well, reunion. I'm confused. I don't know who to trust. I. The girls are coming in hot and heavy. Yeah. And the guys are just kind of trying to respond. So Exactly. I'm not sure, especially when it comes to Cameron and Claire. That's what I'm ca- trying to figure out. Who is lying? Okay. We will figure all that out, or we will try to. But first, real quick, a little business. We're on Supercast. We're on Patreon. Over there, we're wrapping up another show. We're wrapping up. The single life, it is, that is a hot and heavy tell-all. Yeah. There is one more part. They have told it all, but there's still more to be told, apparently. Can't wait. So we will be covering that. And then right after that, we're going to be talking Love in Paradise. Love in Paradise. A new show coming to TLC. Well, a new season. New season, yes. So patreon.com slash marythroughouty, marythroughouty.supercast.com. It is ad-free. It is business-free. None of this. There's video of the podcast on the Family Affair level, video of the the bonus podcast, which is the Love in Paradise or the Single Life. Mm -hmm. Also on that level, there's a monthly bonus. We just do a random bonus every month, which is fun. So check it out, Patreon Supercast. Also, we're on Instagram at marythroughoutypod. You can call in there, but not this episode because <laughs> taking the phone's off the hook. But Ladies, yeah. you can call in. I'll chat with you. Message us. Share your thoughts. We'd love to hear it. So check us out on Instagram at Married Reality Pod. Also, make sure you're following the podcast wherever you're listening. It's so easy to do. Look down, smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as the pink dresses because I liked it. All right. I'm not a big p- fan of pink. But they pulled it off. All right. Pulling it off, except for Chloe. She's, but she didn't get the memo. She didn't get the memo. She's not I think the, she was boycotting. She's not on the group on the group text. Smash like it's as hot as that. And last but not least, if you haven't left a review, please do. It's the end of the season. What better time to leave a review? Let us know your thoughts. How'd you like to recap this season? If it's a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on this podcast right here. Yes. All right. Let's get into it. Enough of the dilly-dallying. Enough dancing around. Let's... Get right into the meat of it. Let's cruise because they dived right in. Kevin Frazier kicking things off. Kevin, really? Like they, they, this was such a wild tell all. Yeah, no. Nope. Kevin right in the middle of it, standing his ground. Yeah, there's no fat. There was, there was no part of this tell all that I can think of that I'd be like, nah, we didn't need that. Nah, we didn't need that. A lot of the times, Kevin was like, all right, we'll see you later. And then Emily or whoever was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. we still got more. We got to dunk on these guys a little bit more. So let's not let's not go anywhere too fast. Here's why I'm confused who to trust, because at this point, they're just about to become irrelevant because that's maths. It's not 90 day that you can go on spin offs after spin offs. Right. Yeah. Why? Why are they so eager to get it all out? Just Here's, to be nasty. So do you want my... I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here for it. Don't get yeah. me wrong. This was my favorite math still of all freaking times. Okay. This was great. But what's what's with the, oh, like, let's really go at each other. And 
again, I'm not sure who I'm, who side I'm taking, if I can even take any side. But the girls came in a little too hot. So let's 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 get into it. I'll start by saying I'm not taking anyone's side exclusively. Okay. Okay. I'm not taking the guys at, at their word 100 percent or the or the girls at their word 100 percent. That being said, I think the the women are out for blood. I think a lot of it comes down to the fact that the guys just weren't into them and they're having a hard time accepting that. And look, it's very rare that someone likes you. That's why it's so amazing when you do find mm. your life partner because it's special. It if is. every time you walk down the sidewalk, you ran into someone who you had this amazing connection with and you each thought the other person was beautiful, it wouldn't be that special to find your perfect person to get married. So I I think maybe the experts drop the ball a little bit. Experts hit it. <laughs> <laughs> they did not. I think they dropped the ball a little bit. The guys just weren't that into the women. And the women had a hard time accepting that. Which I can understand. It's it's hard to to hear and to learn that someone's not that into you, and they couldn't deal with it. And now they're kind of doing all they can to shit on the men for making them feel the way they did. Now, why do I think this? A couple of reasons. One, did all the men dress in in one color to show solidarity? No, they barely talk. The women. And let's the other big thing that was thrown around on this part one of this reunion was, oh, we, there was a lot of scheming, a lot of plotting mm -hmm, behind. Mm -hmm. What do you call four women wearing matching pink outfits? I call that a scheme and a plot. I, I call, call it that, the Wednesday. I call that strategy. Mean girls. Okay. I know, <laughs> but I call that strategy and I call that scheming saying, hey, we're all going to wear pink. That sounds like a lot of what you were accusing the guys of doing, ladies. Yeah. So right there on your bodies, you're proving that, no, you, in fact, connive and, and scheme and plot and strategize just by what you're wearing. Go ahead. Sorry. I have, okay. My hot take, and I think I might be right. The only beef that I don't fully understand and I'm trying to wrap my mind around is Cameron and Claire. Because they they basically everything they that comes out of their mouth, the other person says, No, you're a liar. Yes. The girls just take Claire's side. And there was the point that Cl Cameron is telling a story, and the girls were like, No, Claire, that's that's what you said that he's doing to you. And I feel like one of them is obviously lying. Well, they but both I, can be there can be they both can be lying. Let's say that. They both can be lying, correct. But I think when it comes to Emily, Brennan, Austin, Becca, they're hanging on these pieces of truth that they keep going hard at each other, but it's always underneath there is this truth that one of them agrees to. Mm -hmm. One of them caves in and says, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I did that. Oh, I guess I did that unintentionally. I don't know how it makes you feel, right? Yeah. They keep like one by one like owning up to all this beef. But with Cameron and Claire, they just don't. They so, don't own up. They just go hard at each other, just calling each other liars one after the other. Let's unwrap this a little bit more then because we, we start with, with Cameron and Claire. And for them, it seemed to start okay on wedding night because all there was was first impression. First impression was pretty good. Yeah. But then as you start to learn about the other person, you find things that you don't like or you find things... That make you say, oh, they're actually not into me. They don't like me. I need to now protect myself and put up my defense mechanisms. A la Cameron saying, oh, I wanted European slender, whatever that is. But I think he joked. Like, I don't think he told Claire, um, yeah, I wanted the European slender and I got you. I think they talked about maybe what their ask was. Maybe Claire said she wanted someone with blonde hair and she got Cameron. I think it's okay to say it. I think the way it came out was not okay because she took it personally. Well, it is but personal. I do, it yeah. is personal. You can't say, I didn't get what I asked for. I asked for slender. That means... I'm calling you not European slender. I don't even know what it no means, knows that to means. be honest. But that means you are not this. 
because we're saying, oh, what did you ask for that you didn't get? So but that, shame on Cameron for saying that. I think that's offensive and you don't need to say that. It is offensive. I, I agree. But I don't think, I don't believe that if he knew how it sounds, he would have said it. I think he just said whatever he, he asked for tall and slender or European and slender. I think they talked about, hey, what did you ask the experts? He said it. I don't believe that because it's offensive. I'm I'm here for it. He shouldn't have said it, but I don't think he meant it the way it came out. I hope not. Because otherwise then, then, then he's a total asshole. Maybe he thinks, maybe he mistook lanky for slender. Like, Slender, I think, is is just referencing being thin. It has nothing to do with height, right? Lanky is like tall and skinny. We know Claire is short. Yeah. At least compared when she stands next to Claire. But she is slender, so there is no reason for him she's, not to say she's that. She's definitely fit. Yeah. yeah. She's very athletic. And maybe he meant like, I'm a very, I'm a tall guy. I don't think he's that tall. I think he's, what, six six. Foot, six uh, foot one. I think he's pretty tall. But he just wanted someone maybe closer to his height. Is that so wrong to say? I don't think so. But bringing weight or body shape into it, that gets a little hairy. So once Claire hears that, she starts to pull away. And I think that's all it took for her to be like, well, he doesn't like me. I'm not going to like him. And then boom, off to the races. Yeah. No, I get it. Again, I... What he said was not okay, uh, especially in, especially not in that context. But he did kept saying that he likes her. He kept kept saying he's attractive to her, and I remember him telling her that. I know yeah. she says she doesn't, but I remember him saying he is attracted to his wife. And he would say things like, "Oh, nice ass," <laughs> and she would say, "Don't say that." Anyone on the street could say that. Okay, that's fine. I don't like when you get picky about compliments. If I'm going to give you a compliment. Don't tell me what compliment I can give you. Yeah. That's how I feel. I want to share that. It it is still flattering, I believe. I I mean, I guess. It depends how you say it. True. True. Right? Uh, That's my other point. If I was like, damn, your ass looks good in those jeans, that's pretty, I think that's a nice compliment. Yeah. Right? I mean, we've built a rapport. I think I can say that. If I said that to a girl I'd been dating for a week, maybe it's a little icky. Yeah, I guess. But- also, I feel like we sometimes forget, and not to give him any grace for this, but he's from New Zealand. It's the same way I'm from Czech. I sometimes say things that you are like, oh my gosh, like don't say it. It sounds offensive, but I don't mean it. Mm-hmm. I just, I am honest and I maybe have a little different sense of humor sometimes. I believe that's him too. That's every other culture. Every other culture approaches things differently. Yeah. Uh, English is their first language, so we're not It gonna- is, but it's not, not the language. It's... It's, it's culture. Yeah, yeah. and it's a maybe, maybe he was joking. I'm not saying it's funny, but maybe for him, yeah, it's, it's a little joke and then it turned into this. But I don't know. I, I felt like he was attracted to her. Yeah. So like his comment was shitty, but I don't think he meant it. I. If, however, if Brennan said that, I would be like, he totally meant it because he was proving over and over that he was not attracted to Emily. Sure. I I do believe Cameron was, is attracted to Claire. There was mention of a boyfriend who she banged recently. Mm-hmm. I would love to know the actual timeline of that. Yeah. Like we're hearing days or weeks before the wedding and versus a year before the yeah. wedding. Two very different things. But another thing that makes me go, ah, kind of team Cameron or ah, kind of going to take the guy's side on this is Kevin saying, Oh, okay, let's talk about the present. Let's talk about the future. Any chance you'd want to make this work? And Cameron goes, yeah, actually I I, kind of would like to make this work. I would love to have a second chance. I'd love to start fresh. And I, I, under my breath, I called BS because I'm like, all right, see now I'm, I'm not taking your side because you're doing this, on TV, you're trying to make yourself a hero. You're trying to make yourself look good in front of the cameras. If you really felt this way, why wouldn't you do it sooner? And then Claire goes, he actually told me he loved me five weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, because he also told me I was crazy. It was like, oh, so he actually did tell you off camera he loved you? 
I'm taking Cameron's side now. Yeah. I I have to take Cameron's side if if it's not for a show, it's for for real. And then on top of that, and he told maybe, Brennan he wanted to stay married. Told Brennan, if she does. But on top of that, and this is the nail in the coffin for me, at least, and I'm not going to generalize all the ladies in pink, but at least for this one, for Claire, the nail in the coffin for me in siding with Cameron was when all of a sudden we find out she's got a boyfriend, basically. Yes. Right? Maybe it's not the the boyfriend she banged right before the wedding, but now she's dating a guy. She's exclusive with a guy. Oh, and you didn't tell Cameron this? Why? Because you wanted to drag him and make yourself look like the victim? It's hard. People are going to not feel bad for you if they know you're in a relationship. Yeah. But if, oh, poor you, you're single by yourself at home every night alone, they're going to feel bad for you and go, Cameron, you're so shitty. That's why you kept it a secret. You didn't tell anyone until it was pried out of you that you're actually, you've moved on and you're dating and you're happy and you have a boyfriend. Yeah. So- I kind of did a 180. I was I was shitting on Cameron all season and now I'm kind of I'm kind of team Cameron. Yeah. And also he wanted to stay married as I said. I think he ended up saying no, but I think it's because they just talked about it and he knew what's going to come out of it. But apparently at the honeymoon he also told her like I think I'm falling for you and she said don't even go there. Yeah. Claire said it's not true. I can see her saying that. I can see her n- not wanting to get into anything because after maybe the comment he made or maybe she wasn't attracted to him that much, she was kind of checked out. I think that's what it was. I think he made this comment, which he should not have made for a number of reasons. One, because it's insulting and rude. Two, because now you've planted the seed of doubt in her mind. And after that comment, she totally said, well, this is not going to work. Maybe she's had issues with that in the past. She's she's going down memory lane. Oh, here we go again. I'm in reruns. And she turned on the defense mechanism switch. She started to not accept his advances and couldn't see him any other way than this guy who made a comment about her body. Yeah. And so, yeah. Then they concocted this plan to lie yeah. about religion. Okay, uh- what do you mean lie about the religion? They apparently she's like, this isn't going to work. And Cameron said, all right, well, I can come up with a reason. If you want to make this like it never happened, I'll come up with a reason why we're just not compatible. And he said the reason was religion. But the reason, one of the reasons was religion. She is religious. I know, but yeah. he probably didn't care that much and just goes, okay, well, I can pretend that we're not going to see eye to eye on this. Mm. So that's our out. Interesting. Well, Kevin called him out and said, you deceived this process. You screwed it. You screwed yourself because this is not how it works. Yeah. And that leaves such a bad taste in my mouth that all this entire cast seems to have scammed. It does. But the whole, they keep saying we plotted, we're plotting. Cameron, I think it was Emily who said Cameron is the master manipulator. On the other side, the guys call Claire the master manipulator. Did Cameron and Claire come up with this whole scheme? But like, here's the thing. What's the scheme? Because they each had a different story. The scheme is let's get through this. Let's try to paint all of ourselves in the best light so that we could benefit on social media. But they or, didn't. That's the thing. Not, well, the wheels started to fall off towards the end. It was all pretty like, eh, well, we're not, it's not sparks in the bedroom, but we're hopeful. And then the last couple episodes was like, oh, oh shit. No, it wasn't with with Brennan and Emily, that was going down. Which no, but his whole time he kept going, I'm not going to, I'm not going to share. I wouldn't want, I'm not going to put this out there. That's not fair to her. He was still trying to play by the rules and not put anything out there that would damage them irreputably. Well, okay. Well, what would be better if they all call it quits on day two or if they ended up playing by the rules? If they played by the rules, it'd be better. If they all call it a quits... They'd get zero but clout. That would, that would be mass. But I still like, yes, they could have maybe plotted or discussed something. I don't believe that this whole was like, let's just follow a plan. I think there was more to it. There were maybe some relationships being built and then ultimately 
No, like with Becca and Austin, I do believe still that at some point they were into each other. At least he was into her. He was never until, into her. Until he wasn't. He was never into her. I think he was at the beginning. Okay. You don't think so? I know he was I think he, he was into her at the beginning. He was not. But I think all the pressure and the sex and this and that, and maybe the producer that he met, that all started going d- south. He was not. It's easy to get... This, okay, describe into someone. For me, it's just, oh, they're not bad to look at and we get along. That is That's, not being into someone. That, that is, is into something. No, that is dealing with someone. That's not true. That is accepting. I deal with people on a daily basis, that people is ex- I don't like. That is accepting someone, but the into someone is like, this is what I've been looking for. This is I can't stop thinking about you. I want to be with you all the time. I don't need anyone else but you. My, I'm not even looking at other people. That's being into someone. I thought into someone is like a booty call. Like, oh, yeah, I can, yeah, we can no, hang out. No, that's a booty call. No, I, I think... In being into someone is like two steps down before a relationship. Okay, it's the start of a relationship. So you, being you have- into someone means that, oh, okay, you've been into other people and then you went on three days and you realize like, ah, oh, this is I'm sure. definitely not into this People person. have been married and then realized, oh, and that's I'm, what I'm, saying. I'm not into he this was person. In, he was into her at the beginning. I think maybe at the very yes, least. Yes, he was. At the very least, he was pretending to be, trying to be. I think he was into her at the beginning. And I think with when all these conversations, the plotting started happening and she started talking about sex and religion and it all started being like, Mm-mm, I don't think that, I think that turned the whole, oh, I'm into her, into, mm, no. I don't know. The plotting only happened because none of the guys were into the women. And so then it became, well, we don't want this experiment to end in a week. Well, Let's just all plan to keep it going. Okay, but why did the... Okay, Kevin made a good point. Why did the girls who went along with it? If the guys plotted it and the girls did not want... They wanted to have real relationships. Why didn't they come out and say and say, Hey, look, I'm not doing this shit. I'm here for marriage. You don't want to marry me. That's it. I don't think the guys necessarily plotted it. I think maybe the guys... It's hard to fake whether you're and into that's someone, my entire or, whether you're into someone or not, it's not impossible though. And maybe they were trying to fake it. The girls picked up on it. Look, I get it. You're not into me. You're not even, we're not even making out. We're not, we're not even showering with our bathing suits on. Let's just get through this. We can figure out a way to get through this so that we don't have to bail on the process. Who knows whose idea it was? It could have very well been the women's. The women are blaming the guys of like, oh yeah, they want social media clout. They want uh, their businesses, this and that's like, I don't see that panning out. I don't know. No guy that I know has a business to promote on social media. The only person I know that has a business to promote on social media would probably be Becca. Who's True. got a wedding photography business. Yeah. So I don't, I don't see Michael, project manager Michael or Brennan who does whatever he does. Something in finance, I feel like. He looks like a finance bro. He's uh where is he? I had his job written down. Software consultant. Mm-hmm. I don't think he's going to benefit from posting on Instagram for his software consultancy. Austin's in business development. I don't think like none of these people are entrepreneurs except. Well, Cameron was, but apparently now he now works he's in, in finance. finance. So which I think what that's his degree in. Becca's an entrepreneur. Yeah. That's Claire's the therapist. She could benefit. She's probably owns her own practice, I think. So she could benefit from that. I don't see the guys benefiting from it. So the girls may have very well read the room and said, you know what? Before you just totally go out on this, how about this idea? Yeah, it's shitty that this happened because they took away from maths and from what maths is about. Which is learning how much people make in going (laughs) house hunting together. I would love to do that. I do believe the girls came... I believe that they all came into this wanting to be married, but I don't think they came into this willing to do whatever to make it work. I think they came into this and said, oh, I asked for a brown hair girl. I got a blonde Emily. I'm not into this anymore. Totally. And that was it. Totally. I agree. All right. This is a good place to take a break. 
When we come back, let's dive into Becca and Austin. Let's do it. All right. We'll be back in a second. And we're back. Hello, Jonathan. You want to take a shower with our bathing suits on? No. Why oh. would I? <laughs> I've never been to a religious camp, but that's what I imagine it's like. A couple of teenagers in their bathing suits taking showers. Together. I mean, I did take a shower in a bathing suit at camp, but it's because they were outdoor showers. We all showered together with the guys. Ooh. We were so, just not, like, so not they, European. They were outdoors showers, so we had to wear our bathing suits. Covering up that European slender? Sure. I mean, I only wore the bottom because I was like six years old, so I didn't wear a top bathing suit until I was like 11. Hmm. But Say less. All right. First question, Becca and Austin. What happened? What the heck happened? What was real and what wasn't? It's hard to differentiate. <sighs> What does it even mean? It's what we heard. It's what we heard all season, and and what she's saying is Austin's a great manipulator, a great liar. She can't tell what's real and what's not. It's like I, I'm. I get it. Okay, he he maybe is that, but me watching him, he cries every ten minutes. Like he, yeah. I don't think he's a great actor. I don't think he was into her. He tried to be a nice guy. And that may have been confusing to her. It's what I would do. Look, if I'm being honest, it's what I would do. If I was put in this position, I don't think I would tell someone, hey, I'm not attracted to you. This isn't going to work. I would look at the calendar and go, huh, two months? Yeah, I could get through that. And I would do it. And I think that's what a lot so of these- So you would pretend and kiss and do be, be hug, touch you. Sure, because in the back of the, my mind, that's what I'm supposed to do. You see, like, I couldn't do it because but, I can't even, I can't even hug people I don't like. Uh, then this show's not for you. But that's the process is, I know at first you guys might not like each other. Look at Jamie and Doug. But if you try, mm. if you try, you can get over it and maybe you'll have a, a lasting, loving marriage. And maybe so, that's what Austin was trying to do. Exactly. So he's not wrong for trying. It's not gaslighting or manipulative. He's just trying to go along with the process. But maybe deep down he knew this isn't working. I'm not feeling it. This is unnatural. And so it ended. But back to Doug and Jamie, she had that reaction at the wedding but they hit it over the honeymoon. Was it that soon? It was that soon that she started to really see him in a different light. And then it was just going up the hill from then. For, for them, the honeymoon seemed fine. They had no issues. They, I didn't pick up on any issues until Becca started talking. Mm-hmm. I until could. then, I thought, oh, wow, lovey-dovey, they're going to make it. We all felt this no, way. No, I never did. I picked, I picked Well, like, up. you didn't. We all felt this way that, oh, they have to make it. Becca and Austin have to make it. They're so cute. They're so lovey-dovey. We all saw that until we didn't. Until he slept in that football <laughs> player's bed. Until Becca started actually talking and saying how things are. We didn't know before. Yeah. I saw them as cute and I, I really saw them as friends and I probably had said but it's it. it's part of that. You need to be friends. Yeah, you do. But there also needs to be a romantic spark there. And that we never saw. We saw friends and we saw buddy buddy and we saw you guys could laugh together, but we never saw a romantic spark. Well, the spark needs to be there first, at least for me. And if then it, yeah, if it's a relationship. Yeah. Correct. So they bring up the fact that there was never this intimacy and Austin says, well, we acknowledged it. We acknowledged there was an issue, but then they're just kept getting more and more pressure put on it. And once more pressure is put on it, then it's really hard to get in that state. Yes. And so apparently on one of the after parties, Austin said that he takes a little longer. His timelines, maybe three to six months for intimacy. Mm -hmm. For Becca, she says, if I knew it, I wouldn't pressure him so much. But there are other types of intimacies that didn't didn't need us to bang it out to the point that when she said they were hugging once with clothes on, he pushed her away that she's so being a horn dog. Here's how I feel. I think he was getting horny 
and he just maybe because of his religion or because of his stupid three to six months rule, he didn't even want to go there. You're so optimistic. No. This is not optimistic. Yes, it is. Oh, okay. You can have sex without feeling anything for anyone. It's just different sex. Yeah, but if you're not turned on, you can't have sex. And so if he's not turned on by her. So so if they are hugging, how how does he feel that she, like, why would you push her away? He felt she was smothering her, him. Oh, that's and, a good point. Right? We've all been there. It's like, hey, I'm trying to do something right now. You're smothering me, you horny girl. <laughs> so that's what he felt. In, in our instance, I'll be like, I'll get to you in 30 minutes or whatever. In his instance, it's, I, I never want to get to you because I'm not attracted to you and I don't want to make that happen. So he, he shot her down. He shut her down in probably the, the politest way he, he could or he tried to at least. And then slowly but surely, Becca picked up on this. And that's when it became an issue. Is, oh, wow. He, he does keep rejecting me and refusing yeah, my no, advances. I, I do agree with you, but I'm going to stand my ground on that he was into her once upon a time. He may have been open to the idea. Yeah. When he first, oh, this is a cute girl. We get along. Maybe something will happen. But then as time goes on, you go, you know what? It's not happening. Correct. I'm not feeling it. It's Correct. not coming. But he masked it pretty well, at least for me. For you, he definitely did. All right. Was there anything else with the two? I mean, what are they now? They're not dating. No. Austin would like to have a conversation with Becca, talk about everything after this tell all. And Becca said, sure, in like two to three years. Yeah. So they're on very different places. The producer thing came up for a hot second. I wish we got more into it. And like, like he's dating her. Yeah. Or yeah. When did that start? How did it start? Um, because Becca's like the, the real issue, the, the wedge that grew between us was you going out with the producer and lying about it. And Austin was like, fair. And but he that got, was the end. That was uh, the it, very end. It was the end of the relationship. It was not the end. Well, after was the end of the relationship. Because what Austin said was like, it was after decision day. There was nothing to celebrate, so I didn't tell Becca we were Which going. Which is bullshit because there was nothing to celebrate. You guys said you're staying together. Yeah. So that's my point is he's trying to be this nice guy on camera. Yeah. And say yes on decision day. And apparently oh, that was. Oh, that's a great point. Apparently that was his plan the whole time Becca said was, oh, he's just going to get through the two months and say yes on decision day no matter what. And they'll figure it out afterwards. That to me screams he just wants to be a nice guy. He doesn't want to hurt anyone's feelings or break anyone's heart on camera. He wants to be a nice guy, say yes on decision day. And when the cameras go away, then I'll break your heart. I believe that this was maybe his plan. But uh, yeah, the, here is why. I mean, I don't get it, but I do. You were getting divorced regardless. So if maybe he felt like, oh, let me just do it quietly. or Or he could have felt like, Let's see how it is when the camera's out of way. Let's see if we can get past all those if, plotting and all those if, issues. If you're not into someone for two months with cameras, and let's not forget, there's not cameras there 24-7. No, they have the Nest cameras. Okay, but they're, they're alone enough time to realize how life's going to be without cameras, I'm pretty sure. Even if it's a few days a week for 12 hours a day. Those other days, you kind of get a feeling of like, oh, so this is what it's going to be like when there's no cameras here. He knew that once the cameras officially went away, there wasn't going to be some magical spark that grew. No, for sure. And I think the only thing I need to know about is to feel like he wasn't into her now. The fact that he went out with friends on Correct. the day they said yes. Correct. And didn't tell her. You just said, yes, we're staying married. Yeah. And I'm just going to ditch yeah. you and not tell he, you. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. He was not into her. All right. He was at the beginning, though. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you forget it. <laughs> Michael and Chloe, the only couple to sit next to each other this entire reunion. Yeah. Well, you skip one thing when Kevin got sassy because Kevin said, all right, well, this is it. You guys had an opportunity, to be honest, but you didn't. So... 
And Austin got very offended. Yeah, because everyone is trying to make him and some of the other guys look like liars. And I don't think it's fair just to point the finger, which is all Emily wants to do for sure, is point the finger and go, you, you, you. And I'm sorry, Emily, but the faces you make and the and the eyes you roll are are just as inappropriate. I hope she does not play poker because it's just as inappropriate at, at some of the things these guys have done and said. Well, I don't think she's a wero. That's what she does. Let's not give her shit for rolling her eyes because eh. that's part of what she does. It would piss me off. You roll your eyes too. I know. I think it's usually in good fun. I don't really, like, I don't do it if we're having a serious argument. I don't think I roll my eyes. It's more like if you ask me to take out the garbage after I just put on my pajamas or something, I'll be like, Come I never on. do that. I'm just saying, I'm trying to make up an example. I would never let you leave the <laughs> house in your PJs. <laughs> True. You would roll your eyes at me if I tried. That, that what I would do. Yes. All right. But yeah, he got a little sassy because he felt the heat. I love the sass on Kev. Kevin's a great host. He is. He is. I right. love the sass. Bring you all the sass. Michael and Chloe. Sitting next to each other, unlike all these other couples. Yeah. Chloe's first impression of Michael. Well, glad I didn't choose that pink dress. We are too, Chloe. Yes. And because Michael is fabulous, he shines until he doesn't, which... Today's outfit was very boring for Michael. It's not a sitting outfit. I think if he stood, you would see the pants and you'd go, oh, those are some pretty wild pants. Maybe, maybe. They were like hammer style balloon pants. But yeah, it wasn't anything. The glasses were really the statement piece. Here's what I'm sad about. I loved Michael's head. I I loved it so much. And he shaved it off and I'm mad at him. Yeah, it was cool. Um... So Chloe says, I came into this process, I was, I was all in and I was ready to say yes on decision day, barring my husband being like uh, clinically insane. So she was all in and I- I'm changing my tune on a lot of people this episode because I'm, I'm team Chloe now. I think she really proved herself. I think I- she was here for the right reasons. I think so too. I I did buy that she was all in. I did think Michael was all in too, but I knew that he is not into her. I couldn't see it in Austin. I could see it in Michael. I know they got closer. They banged it out, but that's the whole friends with benefits or yeah. Like, I mean, you're attractive enough for me that I can bang you, but there is something missing and not just looks wise. Like overall, they disagreed on a lot of big things. I knew they're not going to say yes. I knew it. And I was surprised that she did, but I think she did because she is in almost 40 and she's, this is it. I'm going to try to make it work until I can't. I think she's also a doer and and that's not the right word, but like when I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I said I was going to get married. I'm going to do it. I'm going to go through with it. I'm not going to. She's not a quitter, probably. Well, I think at the beginning, she I don't think she was sold on Michael immediately, but I think she really got to like him a lot. I think quick enough she was. We get this this commentary here where she's got to go back. She's going to be with her dogs. Her dogs are going to be without her for a while. And Kevin was like, well, what if Michael asked you to stay? What if he said he would? He would really like for you to not go back home. Would you have stayed? And she was like, full transparency, not only would I have stayed, that's actually what I was needing. That's what I was hoping he would do. Yeah, apparently she, after the honeymoon, she didn't feel like Michael was invested in this relationship at all. For a couple reasons. True, but we didn't see any of that. We knew the mom part. We did, but she was so on board. I'm like, okay, that's great. She understands. I feel like if she wasn't on board, she should have come out and said. She was so Uh, supportive. Like, if you weren't supportive, if you thought that it was really weird, as Michael said, we could have maybe, you could have challenged me. We could have talked about it more. Yeah. But, But she was so supportive that I get it. If you 
told me you're supportive of something cr- weird and crazy I do, I would just go with it. I would take your word. And if you started questioning me three months later that you actually, that wasn't it, I would be like, what are you talking about? You were supportive. That's all I'm going to take. I'm going to take your word for it. Yeah. It, it's a bit on her to, if she has an issue with something to say, Yeah, to say she does. And the last name thing I'm kind of torn on too, because I could hear him say something like, oh, you don't have to. Like he's very progressive. Yeah. He's, he's very open-minded. And so if she's like, oh, what's, what's my last, what's my new last name going to be? I could hear him just be like, you don't have to change your last name. Like, yeah. And not, not at being like, look, honey, you're not going to have to, because this isn't going to last. So I don't know. I would need to hear it on tape to decide what that meant. Did we talk about our last name or not? Was was it just, oh, you were going to take my last name. I was because that's the traditional way in Czech, but I have even talked about it. I think we talked about it. It didn't cross my mind that I wouldn't. If you wanted to hyphenate, I could get behind that. I did, but then the Czechs don't really do it. Uh, and I was told that I might have issues with some stuff, my I, passport especially. So I could get I, behind a hyphen. I, I just like, and I'm not like a sports guy, but I like the idea that when you're married, when you have a family, that you, you got the same name on the back of your jersey. Like, we're a team. We <laughs> share, we share, this is our team name. I'm, believe me, I'm all for it. The reason why I was thinking of not even hyphenating, just keeping the first initial of my maiden name as my middle name. Mm-hmm. Freaking checks don't do middle names. So then I, I just did some research and maybe this is not true. We could probably make it work. But based on the amount of paperwork I had to fill out to actually get my name on my passport... Yeah. That was a lot. We don't have, <laughs> there, there is no place to put a middle name. Yeah, I think my mom, Sally G. Shout out to Sally G. You know how much they questioned it? They returned with, because I had to, I had to submit your parents' information too. Yeah. They called my dad and said, G is not a middle name. What is the middle oh. name? <laughs> and my dad said, it's Sally G yeah. and last yeah. name. And they said, no, it's not. What is it? Was this a Jenny? And my dad was like, no, it's not. They had a, bit, a lot of issues with that to the point that my dad was like, that's your freaking middle name. Yeah. And they, I think they just went with it. But a lot of issues with that. G. Mm-hmm, exactly. G was. All right. OMG. All right. Yeah. I can see the same thing with Michael just being like, yeah. Like, I think also sometimes people hear things differently, right? So like you might say something that you don't think is offensive or you don't think that I'm going to react to. I hear you being mad or like you yelling. Totally. And that's not the case. So I feel like he might have just said it like, yeah, something would have. So yeah, like why not? And she heard, oh my gosh, like he does not want me to take his last name. Right. It's all context and it's all what you already feel inside you that's how you're going to internalize what he said. If yeah. you're not feeling great about the relationship, you're going to internalize it in a more negative way. Yeah. All right. So that's Michael and Chloe. Yeah. I mean, Michael, they, Kevin was trying to ask Michael, like, why didn't he say yes? And Michael just said he didn't see, he didn't think they made enough progress to stay together past. Yeah. But he does regret it apparently, but he doesn't regret saying no, but he regrets not being at the point that he could have said yes, which, which is, is just dumb. a fancy way of regretting maybe saying no. No, it's a fancy way of saying it, it's not you, it's me. It's a fancy way of yeah. that. Yeah, it's a fancy way of literally being true to yourself. That They could not make it work. I'll just be honest. <laughs> There's just no way. Yeah. And Kevin kind of asked Chloe, like, would you want to try? She's like, oh, no, like. Uh, you know, we're good with Michael. No hard feeling. I would have done this again, but I moved on. Yeah. Yeah. I'm team Chloe now. I'm team Chloe and Michael. None of them did anything wrong. True. True. All right. And then we just get the, the ladies out for one more conversation. It's more of the same. It's just more man bashing. It is, but Chloe. I think she's just really, she's on a different level. She's than taking the ladies. high road. Also because she, and they made a good point, she wasn't part of the gang from the start 
and she had she got my they had a nice relationship with Michael it didn't work out at the end but there are no hard feelings and Michael banged her so yeah. that gives her confidence she feels that she is is attractive and loved and valued and so yeah she's not part of the pink party <laughs> an issue I have with how and look at the phones are staying off the hook for a week but the issue I have with how Emily in particular talks about the guys is that like she makes it seem like they they knew each other before they got on this show and this was their plan the whole time. We're going to mm. get on the show and we're going to do this thing. It's like these guys met on the show. You think they all came on this show with the same ulterior motive and just happened to meet each other on the show? Like, oh, cool. You're here for that too. Me too. Let's screw these women over. It's like, no. I think everyone went in with the right intentions. They I got would hope. They got paired with people that they weren't into and they had to bide their time and get through the two months and divorce at the end. And they they got through it any way they could. But Emily and whoever else is painting it out like this was their plan the whole time. They've known each other. They plotted this. They all applied. They got on and they screwed us. Well, and they like, plotted, no. but Emily, that's, that's my point. The girls can accuse him of plotting, but he plotted with them. They could have stopped it. They could have said absolutely fucking not. Yeah. And then, yes, there would not be any show, but you could have stopped this instead of playing these games for the viewers. Like, Becca thinks all the guys conspire not to bang their women. How does that make any sense? <laughs> no, they're just not into you, and so they don't bang you. Yeah. It's not hard math. It's not a conspiracy theory that your guys aren't banging you. They're just not into you. Correct. I do agree. And and to be fair, I don't know if... And I'm not the one to put on the ladies. Yes, the guys were into them, but were the girls into the guys? I don't think they ever really got to decide on that because things just started going south. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think Becca was into Austin. I think she still is because Becca she's was. dealing with it. I think Claire may have been into Cameron. I think Cameron was into Claire, but he made that dumb comment. I don't and think Claire was into Cameron. I really don't right. think so. I don't know why, but I, I was rooting for them at the beginning. Yeah. I don't think she was that into him. Okay. And uh, I I think Lauren was strangely into Orion for the hot <laughs> two minutes. Sure. Yeah. Uh, and I could see Emily and, and Brennan, but... I think... I think she does find him cute. Probably she was talking about it. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. Yeah. I think maybe that's why the girls feel even more outraged by this. Thank you. That's my point. All right. All right. We get a little piece, of, a little preview of the, of the, of the bashing because these two are just <sighs> going hard, especially Emily. I'm just saying the faces she makes. It would it would turn me off too. But she, I don't think she's aware of it. Even it's worse. It's like some then. people Even worse. bite their nails. It's Even worse. Then, like we all do little things that. I hope she watches this then and realizes what she's doing with her face because it's very off putting. It's offensive. It's it's very off putting, and I think it it's rude. And if I'm having a conversation and I'm speaking from my heart and I'm telling you something that I want you to hear, try to hear it, please. Yeah, but... Don't be completely dismissive of what I'm saying. Correct, but I think she is so upset and she's so out for blood that she does not want to hear it. I know, but she's she's done those faces and eye rolls and everything for the last 23 episodes. That is who she is. I know. I know. But I can't wait for more because... This is wild. Yeah. Brennan basically admitted, I mean, but he this is not the first time he said it, that the experts did not match him with who he asked for. And then he lost faith in the process. Which I can understand being maybe a little disappointed, but is she really, does she really have nothing you ask for? I don't believe it. She must have some qualities you ask for. Well, also, I'm sorry, but how do you have any faith in the process when you look at the statistics? What, <laughs> less than 25% success yeah. rate? So. You should have zero faith in the process to begin with. Yes. And just go in just blind faith. Yeah. And I feel like if you sign up for maths, that's why I would never. 
But if you do, you need to go in with a very open mind, expecting that, hey, this person might not be my type. This person might not be who I would normally go for. However, there is something that we can connect on. And the experts, and I said it before, they need to narrow down people by religion and politics. I think it's and very children or family. And ch- yes, religion, children, and politics. Yeah. Once they have those those three aligned, then look deeper. And yeah. I think there are a lot of religious people in America. I think there are a lot of non-religious people who sign up for mass, right? I think you can kind of find those. There are people who want to have kids. There are people who are like meh. So if there are kids, if there are kids, if there are people who are indifferent on kids, sure. They're already a better match than on the paper girl who goes to church every Sunday and the guy who doesn't even know what church is. They yeah. need to start with those fundamental things and then find those matches. The yeah. fact they keep matching these people who disagree on the basic things that when you go out on a date, you discuss and you immediately know if this is going to work or not. Well, yeah. Of course it's not going to. That's what, that's what it comes down to is those things are so important in the real world oh my that it's absurd and laughable a little bit to be like, well, we're the experts. We can find people and they're not even going to care that they're at odds on politics or religion or family because we're like, we're, they're just so perfect for each other. They'll get over it. It's like, Get over yourself, experts. Yeah. Because nobody's that good. I don't think 10 years ago I would say politics because I feel like people could get along. But politics, I don't want to get... a bigger middle. Yeah, I don't want to get political, but politics have changed in the past eight years, 10 years. And so, yeah, they, they need to start rethinking the process of selecting these couples. I can't pick better couples. Yeah. All right. That is it. Apparently... The double date rumor was not the only rumor flying Ooh. around, so we will get that next week. But whoo, what a what an episode there! What an episode! What an episode! Hope you guys enjoyed watching and listening. If you guys want to hear more of our thoughts, you can join the Patreon or Supercast patreoncom slash Reality, Reality.supercast.com. We're wrapping up the single life over there, and we'll be rolling right into Love and Paradise. Yes. Also, we're on Instagram, so follow us there. Just a quick reminder, the phone will be off the hook for the next week. But follow us at Married to Reality Pod. <laughs> we, love, we, we love hearing from you guys. Um, also, make sure you're following this podcast wherever you're listening. Teresa did the mime, and she threw me off. She did like a smashing the easy Because hey, I thought you forgot. No. Smash it. So, guys, wherever you're listening, make sure you follow the <laughs> podcast. So whenever we drop an episode, no matter what we drop, when we drop, where we drop, how we drop, what time we drop it, it'll come right to your device. It's so easy to do. Look down, smash that follow button. Guys, smash it like it's as hot as this dramatic part one of the Stella. <laughs> I thought you had like a big smash in. That's why you were like, don't forget to smash it because <laughs> no. I have a really good smash it. <laughs> Just reminding you. Uh, I, I think you're this like, is a good smash it. Smash like it's as hot as Becca wish Austin smashed her or something. But it's that, not that hot. No. Would have been. Nah. Like the hot tub that they had their first kiss in. What hot tub? I don't know. I feel like they, they kissed in a hot tub. They did, but it was like middle. That was probably their first kiss. Was it? Uh, after, <laughs> after the altar. Um <laughs> And if you haven't left a review, please do. You guys know we love love. Love love. Unlike these couples over here on Maps who know Ooh. nothing about love. We love a little love. And if you leave a five-star review and you write something, we'll read it on the Monday podcast. Correct. All right. That is it. I've said way too much. I said way too much too. Yet I feel like I haven't said enough. <laughs> Luck- <laughs> Luckily, it's TBC. To be continued. Mm -hmm. All right. There used to be a great frozen yogurt place called TCBY. Really? What does it stand for? The country's best yogurt. (laughs) (laughs) All right. We'll talk to you guys. Yeah, sometimes these little, what is it called? Acronyms. Acronyms Throw me off. And I, and because I'm foreign, I still sometimes am unsure. Like some, this recently, my colleague was, I was asking her if I can call her. 
because I need to talk about something. She says, OFC. And I'm like, of course. Yeah, but I'm like, are you saying of course or are you telling me you're stepping away? She's like, of course. OFC can be like out of. Off the clock. Off the clock. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we are OFC. We are off the clock. That means we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.